Welcome uh, to, to the talk by Rinaldo Niels. Thank you, Rinaldo, for, for uh, being so kind to, uh, to present your research observations experience uh, in the series. Uh, and your, your talk today will be about home education and the relationship with, uh, with home education and, and public education in Belgium or Flanders. I understand your scope is, is more Flanders. So welcome and uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, all spotlights on you, Rinaldo, please. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I will start with a short, um, with shortly introducing myself a bit. Um, for some other reason, uh, I always have had something with, with teaching, with, uh, with schools. Um, as, a, as a pupil, I always liked to go to school, eh? so I, going to school was for me never a problem. And after having finished my uh, my master studies, um, I could immediately start as a teacher um, at the secondary school. First a few months in uh, in Antwerp, uh, but then immediately in Tagerhout, uh, where I am still a teacher. So it's almost uh, 30 years that I'm a teacher, a history teacher in uh, Torhout. Um, but um, I, uh, in 2005, uh, I uh, took a break as a teacher in Torhout uh, to move to, to Poland. I got the chance to build up uh, the bachelor master um, direction of uh, Dutch philology at the university, the Catholic University of John Paul II in Lublin. Uh, and uh, I, uh, um, that was complete other public uh, university. Uh, I also uh, um, made in that time uh, my PhD uh, about uh, linguistics, uh, social linguistics. Uh, so let's say I'm a historian who became uh, a linguist. Uh, and in uh, Poland for uh, more than seven years, uh, I was um, giving lectures about the uh, Dutch uh, linguistics, Dutch history, culture, and uh, some of uh, my uh, publications uh, you can find back on my uh, my academic website. Uh, I have some publications about history, language use, and my last publications uh, go about didactics and let me tell uh, why i'm now more and more uh, publishing about uh, didactics um it has anything to do with uh, the choice we made uh, now already um, yeah more than eight years ago uh, to um, not to send our children to school, uh, but to organize um, homeschooling or home education for our own children. Uh, so this moment uh, at our family, I'm the only person who goes every day to school. I'm a, myself a teacher at school, uh, but my own children don't go to school. Uh, they uh, follow uh, the, uh, yeah, the home education. Um, but if my wife could start like me, uh, because my wife never likes to go to school. She has some frustrations, some traumas, uh, and bad memories. I have many good uh, uh, memories of my, uh, my youth, uh, if uh, it doesn't have. Um, in the beginning, I was sad. But I had something like, okay, uh, let's try, we'll see, we can always stop it. Uh, and more, I'm convinced that uh, home education um, is really, for some people, uh, for our children, uh, a very good alternative um, compared with uh, school, uh, with the public school education. Um, so, uh, I was, uh, I have for, for many years been uh, serving how uh, home education is organized, um, what the advantages are. Uh, and I see, uh, let's say, uh, that 
um, in both systems and in, in school, uh, in public education, but also home education, um, there are uh, plus and minus, there are pros and cons. Um, and for some children, uh, and I'm, con I'm, I'm convinced, eh, I observed that also as a teacher at school, for some children, uh, definitely uh, going to school is the best uh, choice, but for other children, uh, not at all. Uh, and I will present now some, um, uh, some of my observations, but also some of uh, my uh, yeah, uh, data I gathered by, by, by some research. I, I think. Um, I, um, say I have four um, points um, I will present in this, um, in this seminar. Uh, first of all, I want uh, to, um, to say something about uh, some judges, uh, some cliches about homeschooling, which are still very difficult um, to uh, to remove from thinking of people. Eh? Uh, many people, uh, first of all, don't know that uh, home education exists. And if they know that it exists, uh, many people uh, have very bad uh, ideas, very bad cliches about it. So I will start with first uh, something to say about that. Um, then I will um, show uh, the um, how the the value of uh, the value that a well organized um, home education um, can offer for for some uh, for some pupils, um, and um, then they will also try to uh, to show uh, in which sense uh, home education and uh, the public education can be complementary to each other. Uh, they are not, they don't have to be always contradictory. Uh, I don't see home education as a concurrence, uh, the concurrent of uh, public uh, education. Moreover, um, some problems uh, we teach are confronted in public schools can be solved by, uh, by uh, students uh, to make that step to, uh, to home education. Um, and then in, uh, in a certain um, conclusion, uh, I uh, will present a, a project that I worked out, a certain proposal for a project. Uh, I also uh, send already to all members of the uh, Flemish um, Commission of, uh, of, of Education. Uh, so all the parliamentaries uh, which uh, are members of the, the Department of uh, Education received also my uh, proposal to uh, really recognize uh, and to, uh, to support more seriously um, uh, home education. Okay, uh, maybe first of all, uh, something about uh, homeschooling, uh, uh, the, 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 the system of education in Belgium. Uh, in Belgium is since 1914, uh, uh, there is uh, an obligation to, to learn, to study. Eh? There is a compulsory education, but there is no obligation to attend classes at school. And there is no compulsory schooling or compulsory school attendance. Um, so uh, the consequences uh, means that there is a very big freedom uh, in how you organize uh, the way uh, your, your children uh, are being taught, uh, uh, how children uh, learn how children build up uh, skills, uh, build up knowledge. Uh, there is a, a very big freedom in how to do that. Uh, there are some duties, and those duties actually are very minimalized in Belgium. 
Um, first of all, the government fixes some minimum goals per subject. That's what we mean for physics, for mathematics, for languages, uh, per uh, direction. There are some minimum goals. And how you fulfill those minimum goals, there is a, a very big freedom to do that. Also, schools have a very big freedom, uh, school freedom, how to uh, organize their, uh, their lessons, their uh, school practice uh, in um, obtaining those minimum goals. Uh, secondly, a uh, second uh, duty um, is that the government, logic, uh, I think logically there are some minimum goals per subject, so the government has the right to control the process of education. Um, so there is the, uh, the education commission, there is a school commission, but also for those uh, pupils, those teenagers, who um, don't go to school but uh, have uh, home education. There is also an uh, education commission uh, for homeschooling. Eh? Uh, so these are, let's say, two, two, two parts of uh, um, uh, control, uh, controlling commission, eh? school uh, control commission and homeschool control commission. Um, this is not so often. Eh? Uh, my experience uh, in the school system is that uh, a school about every five, six years can expect uh, the Flemish Commission of uh, the Department of uh, um, Education uh, coming to check how the organization is at school, how evaluations are made, um, how uh, and how far minimum goals uh, are, uh, are reached. And uh, in the, the, the homeschooling, I think it's about uh, every three, four years even, uh, um, we had it two times uh, in, the, uh, in, in the basic school, the level of the basic school, we, were, we had two times uh, a visit by the, the commission of the, the, of the Flemish uh, homeschool uh, control commission. A third duty, there has to be minimum uh, one moment of evaluation, or let's say a certain exam system, um, on the level once on primary school, and also a minimum in one degree of the secondary school. That's the minimum. So that means actually uh, during uh, the period that you are obliged to learn, to, to study, um, minimum you have to do twice during that whole period uh, uh, exams. Um, on the level of the primary school and then one degree minimum of the secondary school. Um, of course, Children uh, going to school, they have every week tests, small tests, tasks on which teachers put marks. They are overloaded by all kinds of, of tasks. Um, I hear my students from time to time complaining about that, eh? that they are overloaded. They sit eight hours at school and they come home and they still have to study, still have to make tasks. Um, there are apart from small tests. Uh, also, in the first degree at school, generally four periods in which there are two weeks exams. Um, in the second degree, these are uh, three periods, and in the, in the, in the, in the third degree, uh, there are uh, two big exam periods. But you can say, if you count that uh, in the school year, um, well, there, there are about 30 days that, that students have exams. Uh, and these are so-called big exams, um, apart from all kinds of small tests, uh, testing uh, words, French, vocabulary, uh, English, uh, testing whether you master the formulas of, of mathematics, all kinds of, uh, of tests. This is not obliged by uh, government. This is a choice of schools. 
Of course, um, some alternative schools like Steiner schools and Frenet school, schools they have uh, a little bit of uh, another way of um, making evaluations. Uh, they you choose uh, the system of permanent evaluation, but in uh, more classic schools, um, it really goes well. Tests, marks, the marks are discussed. Eventually, a second test when the marks are not put. Um, you can say that maybe they are a bit over-tested. Uh, if it goes about uh, school levels, um, well, in Belgium, uh, we have the nursery school, the primary school, and the secondary school. Um, I wrote on this slide um, a bit uh, the approximately uh, age. Uh, um, if it goes about the secondary school, we work with degrees. Uh, the first degrees, that, that is, uh, that's always two years. Uh, that's the first and the second uh, year of the secondary school. The second degree, that's on the third and the fourth class of the secondary school. And the third degree is the fifth and the sixth class of the uh, secondary school. Okay. Um, so in, uh, in um, the home education system, as I said, you only have to minimum, you have to do uh, once the exams of all the subjects of the primary school, we would say the sixth class of the primary school, let's say yeah, that you, you master all the, the minimum goals for that class. And in the secondary school, you can choose for the first degree. You can you can also skip that. You can immediately go to the second degree. You can also skip that and immediately go to the third degree. That's a bit, uh, let's say, um, how it is. Um, if it goes about the secondary school, you must have done one degree before 16 years old. That's that's obligatory. So that means that you can that's your choice you 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 can spread all your exams because you can spread exams uh, of of uh, the subjects you can spread that over four years um we with our children with we for our, our oldest uh, daughter have uh, chosen for this uh, our stella uh, she's 13 years old she finished today she finished her last exam her oral exam french in brussels so we are waiting for the the, the final uh, result for that. But she is already subscribed for the exams of the third degree. That's possible. You, you can at the same time be subscribed in two, even three degrees. So uh, she, she, she uh, finished already uh, her exam uh, geography of the third degree, meanwhile. Uh, so this is the exam that students in the sixth class, 17, 18 years old, have at school. I would also did this already. Because we, we, we chose to jump over the second degree. Of course, she has to go through those materials. It has no sense, of course, to, to study the mathematics of the fifth class if you don't master the basic uh, theory of the third and the fourth class, but she, she will not do the exams of that third and fourth class, the second degree. So she finished the first degree and will only do then the exams of the third degree. So that means that the, our daughters will have for uh, three times real, let's say, the, the exams spread, uh, the exams of the primary school, all this is done. Uh, the exams of the first degree and the exams of the third degree. But okay, that's a bit uh, how it is. Um, but we have we have many rights. Eh? There is a big freedom of choice of education system. There is a very big freedom of choice of education organization, the tools uh, of education, the timing, um, etc. Uh, there is also freedom of choice of planning and uh, the organization of the examination. That's of course very nice. But but, but there are methods. Um, on that slice, uh, I uh, worked that out a bit. Uh, explained already what is on uh, on this slide. Um, but there is a very big 
but as I said, uh, namely the Flemish government uh, accepts the fact that there is possibility for whole education. There is a certain tolerance because this is a constitutional right. Uh, uh, it is the, the, the right of the freedom of the choice of education. But the government does like it and they don't hide it. Um, they can, of course, not say too, too sharp that they don't like, but it's very clear. And if you follow the, the debates, which are, of course, always publicly published on the website of the Flemish Parliament, then it's very clear that they don't like it in general. So they, in first, first instance, they try to be as silent as possible when it goes about home education. And they avoid that there could be too much attention by the media. It's not the meaning too many people know that there is a possibility for uh, home education. And apart from that, they really minimize the to give effective financial and logistic support. So it means if you choose for home education, it's your right, but you have to, to deal yourself with it. You have to find yourself your way. Uh, you are actually not helped. So those people, these are about 1,500 uh, uh, families now in the households, or families now in Flanders, who chose for home education is not so much. If you compare that with the United States, for example, in the United States, uh, I, I, uh, it's almost four million of uh, households who. So in the and I also see in the Anglo-Saxon uh, world, um, it's much more normal that households choose for home education. There's less taboo. Um, in in Belgium, there is a certain taboo. So if you do it, okay, but you have to find your way. So those so those uh, thousand five hundred households households uh, who chose uh, for home education, these are in general. I will say all of them, but in general, at least those people know. And these are in general very um, um, confident people who know how it is. These are in general also people with higher diplomas um, and very often also people who don't need external support. Uh, for example, me, I don't need external support. I know how, how the things work. I'm on my way, but I hear, I know that there are also many people one of the points of my, uh, my, my, my conclusions already. Uh, there are also many people, th there exist people who think about home education, who would maybe want to go for home education, but uh, there is a border. They, they don't know how, how to start with it. But for those people, there is no support. Um, and I can even prove that by some um, some quotes. I have here some quotes in, in Dutch, but I will. Uh, uh, they come from uh, from paper. Uh, the first from newspaper, and the the, the the second and the third is really from the um, the report of the uh, commission meetings uh, of the the Department of uh, Education. Um, so I will translate it. Uh, even the, so, the cliché is the biggest cliché: home education that means desocialization. Uh, uh, pupils who follow home education, they uh, sorry, Finn. These are strange. These are strange people who um, who uh, are completely not social. And Minister Waits, uh, Minister of Education. Uh, he uh, stated uh, for the press uh, that was uh, in the context of Corona. Uh, apparently, uh, more people chose for homeschooling or home education uh, because of uh, Corona. And Mr. Waits, uh, that was alarming for him because he stated 
I hope that uh, this data uh, will change uh, because going to school, that's really the best for the children and also for the parents. So that's a very clear statement uh, of the Minister of Education um, in front of the press. Uh, um, as if it is a disaster that more and more people choose for homeschooling. Um, I also quote the, a member of the Flemish parliament, uh, Jean-Jacques de Gucht, uh, who uh, during a, a debate in uh, the Flemish commission uh, for uh, education, uh, he says, uh, I met, he says, really not a fan of homeschooling. For me, it's a very strange thing. And I have reasons, different reasons. Uh, it doesn't go only about uh, the, um, the knowledge and uh, learning to be critical, but it goes also about socialization. And there is less possibility for socialization in homeschooling. Uh, and uh, the reply by Minister Rates uh, is, I think, uh, very clear. He says, uh, in, that, in the same debate, uh, uh, he says, uh, I completely uh, agree with um, Mr. De Hucht. Um, I think that homeschooling, that's the Minister of Education, uh, Minister Rates, uh, I think that homeschooling is only eventually relevant in very exceptional circumstances because we have to emphasize that the social skills and our classic education eh, the public schools this is the best way to give to transfer uh, social skills and that's of course he says and he says of course it's difficult to do that, to realize that in homeschooling. And uh, I, uh, in my, on my slides, you can see that uh, uh, Minister Rates, he says even, uh, I agree with uh, Minister De Hurt, uh, it goes about dat thuis onderwijs. So that's a bit pejorative, dat thuis onderwijs. It's, it really doesn't sound so nicely if you understand Dutch. Um, my first reply on uh, cliché, um, well, uh, probably you all know that in the section uh, world, there, there are already serious uh, researchers, pretty serious research data uh, in the section world. And uh, unfortunately, they almost don't exist yet in, in Flanders. Uh, but for example, uh, a homeschool teacher in the United States, uh, um, she says, let me move here a little bit, that, that, that's great. She says, um, when you use a holistic approach to education, you can look at the entire person as a whole, not just specific learning goals. While academics and basic skills are an important component, holistic education also seeks to develop emotional skills, social behaviors spiritual beliefs and community connectedness uh, in other words uh, homeschool information really can lead sometimes to uh, very strong uh, social skills besides uh, from time to time i find uh, a bit, yeah. i find i find from time to time a uh, uh, nice uh, cartoon on uh, in the uh, so you can see the, uh, the cartoon. What you see on that uh, cartoon, I see very often at school. Uh, you can, uh, I, I wonder, is this socialization? Uh, I think you know what I mean. Is that socialization? Everybody staring at screens in their own world. Because, um, of course, there is a certain socialization at school. But not, that is not always not always positive. Uh, very often, there is also the pressure by the group. Uh, you have to do some things on TikTok. Uh, you have to confirm with clothes. You have to like some music groups. And I see 
I hear those sometimes that sometimes some teenagers really don't want to follow some trends. They are not happy, but if, if they don't do, they don't belong to the group. And then, then you can, of course, um, um, wonder uh, whether this is a good thing, because this is also blocking individuality. This is also blocking the, the possibility to, to develop your own talents uh, by a certain, uh, by the, the group pressure. And this is a matter which is, I see that daily at my school, this uh, underestimated. Uh, I'm lucky uh, I'm teaching in a school in the West Flanders. That's uh, a calm region. We don't have any really problems. So uh, the problems we have at our school are really minimalized. I'm, I'm very uh, lucky. It's a very good school, good management. In general, we don't have heavy problems at our school. What I mentioned, and what you see here, for example, on this uh, cartoon, this is also something I see at our school. So what is, what is uh, being socialized? Um, I also added some uh, cartoons by my daughter. You can always uh, <laughs> um, watch them later. Um, but uh, I also um, refer, I like to refer to a PhD thesis. It's again uh, uh, research uh, done in the section world, uh, but by uh, uh, Brooke Hall. Uh, who quotes uh, other um, um, researchers. Um, and um, it's very clear also in the Anglo Saxon world, they notice that home educated are very often, of course not always, but very often uh, actively engaged and more involve, in, in, on, involvement in community service than the general public. And, in other words, there is no, actually, there is no um, relation between public education or home education or social behavior. I mean, um, social, uh, being socialized, uh, it has to do also with your personality. It has also to do what, 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 uh, what the choices you make. And people think very often that our children, they see the whole day at home, the whole day, which is not true. I think very often uh, home uh, educated uh, teenagers, they are more out of home than in home because they are engaged in sport, in, in sport associations, uh, in the, the art academy, the library reading uh, or lecture uh, group. Um, they take part in Olympiades. They meet people on internet forums. They are very social, very social. Uh, while people at school, they have to sit continuously on those school benches. Uh, so uh, I can give many examples, very concrete and very clear, which in a very easy way can, can show that this is not true that uh, students at school are more social than at home. Uh, uh, a lot has have, have to do also with uh, parents, what parents do with their children, how parents give support to their children. Um, I, I, for example, also uh, a big problem, uh, we are confronted as teachers, is uh, gaming uh, addiction. More and more students are game addicted. This is not social behavior, I think. It is a very big problem. And those students, they are absent-minded at school. They have no power to study. They lose um, motivation to go to school. Uh, and those problems are actually also connected um, to the, the way the household, the family is organized. Um, um the problem of mobbing uh, there are schools in which this is a problem and of course there are all kinds of campaigns 
sensibilization campaigns, not to do that, and it's very, very important that those campaigns exist, but mobbing uh, is very often very subtle. Eh? There is a meeting uh, in a chat group, one of the class, one of the mates of the class are excluded. There is a party, there is an exclu excluded. It's very, uh, very, very subtle, very, very often, if, if there is a problem of mobbing. And uh, again, uh, the question is this, is this socialization? So uh, it's um, anyway a cliche uh, from which I am convinced that it is important that uh, that society knows that this is a cliche, which is not true. Good. Um, because of the fact that home educated uh, teenagers are very often not at home, uh, I also think that the term homeschooling or home education this is an anachronistic term. Uh, I prefer more to speak about individual independent education. Um, different place. Uh, the world is, is my town. Uh, there is a big mobility. It's easy to travel. It's easy to communicate over the world. You don't have to sit consciously at home to learn, to, to develop skills. So uh, only the term, just the term homeschooling, and I'm speaking a bit as a linguist now, but the term homeschooling is also responsible for that wrong Im image that some people have uh, about home educated people. Eh? Home educated people, eh, these are individual independent uh, educated people. A second cliche. Uh, I uh, illustrate a bit by this uh, nice cartoon. Huh? How can parents be able to teach all those different subjects? That's not possible. A parent who can explain mathematics and physics and history and French. That's not possible. You, have, you need teachers for this. In certain way, of course, you need teachers for this, but those teachers, you find those all on the internet. There are books, there are online courses, there are uh, groups, meeting groups uh, in different centra, culture centra, etc. You don't have to, to sit eight hours uh, to teach. Uh, what I want to say is um, the youngest child, uh, uh, our youngest one is nine. Uh, our youngest child, it's true that my wife or me, just more my wife who deals with the youngest child, we have to sit still quite often next to her. That's true. She needs still more more um, direct support. But the oldest one, 13 years, it's very rare that I have to sit. I, I don't have to sit next to her. I only need her structure. I say, now you do this, read this, analyze that problem, make those exercises, look this up on the internet. So I'm a coach. Uh, and um, from time to time, I check that, but it actually, my 30 years old daughter, and I'm 100% sure that in a few years that will also be the, the case uh, with the, the youngest one, uh, she's very self-independent learning, very self-independent. Um, and sometimes she doesn't understand something, then she asks, right? because uh, if she doesn't understand, she asks, and then I explain. Sometimes it happens that I also don't understand immediately, and I look up things for my wife, is then together we look up things and that's very nice i'm also learning a lot thanks to home educations we watch films we travel we discuss we read books um so the the father here on this cartoon who the whole day is sitting next to his child this is not the reality if that would be the reality then there is of course a problem then i would say indeed that's not the meaning of home uh, of, 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 of home education. When I compare my students at school 
Well, uh, I teach mainly uh, student, uh, pupils 16, 17, 18 years old. Well, many of them are far from as independent as my daughter of 13 years old. Um, because they are used continuously to be guided. Next week, that test. You have to do this task, another test. And they live from test to test. Uh, my daughter doesn't live like that. She, she just wants to, to gather knowledge. She wants to build up skills and she is interested. So it's a completely other way. Uh, sometimes we sit outside, uh, she reads. Um, so uh, this is again a cliche, which is not true. Parents, indeed, they don't have to be expert in everything. But it's of course important that parents are interested in everything. Parents, of course, are responsible to give structure, to coach the whole process. It is really not the case that I, I, I have no that I have no freedom. I have a lot of freedom. Um, and of course, nowadays, parents in general, they are themselves educated. They are highly educated. So if I don't understand something about physics, that happens, I, I'm able to look it up, uh, to read something about it. And if I read an article uh, uh, about one or other uh, problem, uh, the law of Newton or whatever, if I read that, then I understand that. Then I have an interesting discussion with my daughter. Secondly, all explanatory tools of all subjects are very often for free available by internet. There are splendid websites, very often in the Anglo, from the Anglo-Saxon world, but teachers who explain all kinds of uh, dilemmas, theoremas, or theories, or whatever, you just have to be able to, to look a bit, to, to, to find it. Uh, so the base of home education is being taught how to be self-independent, and this has only advantages later when they go to university. They can only have advantages. Third cliche, home education is a springboard to extremist education. Uh, uh, I hear it sometimes. Well, uh, there is no connection, of course. There are also extremists in, in school. Uh, I'm luckily that I was not confronted yet uh, in high school, but extremism, of course, you can have that in home education middles, but you can also have that at school. Uh, but this is a task of the, the commission. There is a control commission. So the control commission has to has to control that. Uh, so uh, uh, th th this is also, uh, I think, a, a very nice um, a poster I found uh, from a Facebook group. Uh, um, the multicultural homeschoolers of Houston. There are many, many home uh, educators who share the value of multicularity, not being uh, racist, not being uh, radical. So there is really no, no, uh, no connection. And I quote also uh, Ed Colum uh, in the action world, uh, but in a, a study, and he. He confirms what, what I said. There is really no connection. Uh, I made during the Corona period, period a very small enquête uh, among my students. Uh, uh, it's true, this is not still not a real scientific research, but it is a starter. It can be. Uh, Because there were more here for school. Rinaldo, your we, your connection is breaking now. It it wasn't it was very stable at all, but now we we stopped hearing. No. Okay. No. Okay. It's not only me, yes? Do, do you all have to, yeah. 
It's not only you. <laughs> I have the same problem. He's uh, gone silent. Oh, no. Such a pity, yes, because it's so so interesting what he, what he's saying. But there's internet today on on his side, isn't it? He will he will be back. Meanwhile, not, not questions, but if anybody would like to comment on anything, uh, uh, we have a moment. I have a question to yeah. He speaks a lot about relying on the internet as a, a trove of resources. Uh -huh. And I was wondering how you uh, select. There is so much material on the internet in terms, both in terms of subjects, different subjects and different uh, levels of quality. And I can imagine that you have to spend quite a long time in order to select materials that are appropriate, unless you just find something on YouTube and here we go, yes, but. Yeah. So, yeah, so you know, like for, for him, he's a teacher at the school uh, and also has been working for years in at the university as a researcher and it seems to me that it's really a combination of skills that mm -hmm. that is required yeah because like yeah it's 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 really also a research task to to select materials to you know the, the yeah it's a, i thought it's a huge problem yeah i'm mm -hmm. sometimes i want to learn something and i'm starting to look around and it seems sometimes it's almost intractable yeah, you probably where have to choose where am I going to to spend the next two hours in order to learn something and you have like 200 videos uh, 500 other resources uh, 15 courses on different universities ah. you can you can have also the the researcher drive in in uh, like overdrive yes that when you like you you know too many resources <laughs> yeah that's also a... learn to problematize everything so you know like you dig and dig and dig and it's never never ending ah, i hope he's well weaver i have an answer for you actually for some basic subjects uh, Khan Academy is a very good source. It's really a good source. Yeah. Uh, so, so there are, because I've been researching it myself six years ago when you was homeschooled for a year. Uh, so there are, if you go first, it's much more English speaking resources, which immediately cuts off, in my view, quite a lot of families that are not fluent or comfortable with English, much less resources in other languages. So already for me, one big question rises, uh, how fluent the parents are yeah. in, in English to, to look for those resources, because there is really an abundance of those uh, in, in English. Uh, and then it's kind of assumed from what I hear until now, the certain educational level of parents. And I think uh, the guy is very lucky to be in a very privileged environment where maybe that is assumed, which is in my view, not the case for an average yeah. family. So maybe we should let him talk and we'll see afterwards. Rinaldo, you can see me again. Yes. Okay, yes. I heard already a very, interest, a very interesting and correct uh, remark. But we will discuss about it later. Uh, I hope you can hear me again because I don't know what happened. Uh, yes, you know. Normally your, I should have. Your connection is not like super today. <laughs> so you know, you know. So so it was like uh, kind of like uh, breaking, breaking, and then it it broke uh, completely. So okay, is, let's hope that it is. You can you can have another network or uh, it's the only one. No, I, I have my mobile, but I don't think it's better. more stable. That yeah, we okay. will be more right. stable. Let's, let's continue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I try also. I will try to finish a bit or to to work uh, into the direction of occlusion, uh, because uh, I think I said already important things. 
Um, what I want to say also, so I organized at my school uh, an enquête, uh, in which I um, asked, um, that was of course uh, distance uh, education, that's not the same, that's not completely the same as uh, um, home education, um, but um, about 25, I, I summarize uh, some small statistics, but about um, 25 uh, percent of the my pupils, um, they experienced the fact that they were one week uh, at home to make tasks and studying alone. They experienced that as very, very positive. Um, there were more students who didn't experience that as positive. It's important to emphasize that, but 25 percent is not so, that's not such a small minority. Um, and that was for me very interesting uh, because then I also asked which are for you the, the advantages of not having to be at school. And um, I, uh, I will give a summary in English, eh, but these are literally the answers I got. Eh? They said you can uh, independently um, determine when to study. For example, there is a, a video if it goes too slowly, you can you can uh, go farther, fast. If it is too difficult, you can go back. Uh, you don't waste time because of transport. Yeah? You don't have to take the bus. Um, Rinaldo, you... excuse me. If you are showing the screen, we don't we don't see it. So... Oh, moment. I have to see what is the problem with this. Aha, okay. I have to skip. Okay, I see the problem. Yeah. Okay. Now you can see the screen, yes? Uh, not yet, but it's coming. Okay. Yeah, now. It should... Now you have it? Yes, now it's okay. Okay. So these are all, but of course, there are of course also disadvantages. I will put it on the slide. Uh, there are uh, disadvantages, and if I make a summary, well, the students, the pupils who are not disciplined, for them, it is not good to be not at uh, school. But sc students who are disciplined, who really uh, are able to uh, organize themselves, for them, staying at home can be really uh, uh, very profitable. It's maybe a, a logic it is maybe a logic conclusion, but this is really confirmed by what uh, young people of 16, 17, 18 years uh, say themselves. Um, <coughs> okay. Yes, then uh, I have, um, yes. Just a small problem with those uh, students that are not disciplined, by, but think that they are. Also, of course, that also. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Um, if you have 100 students, you have 100 uh, different characters. Um, <laughs> that that is too uh, it's obvious, <laughs> of course. Um, no, uh, in um, in the in next chapter or next item, um, I uh, described, but I will not describe all of them eh, because then I really need a lot of time. Uh, but I, I will summarize it, but I described uh, many disadvantages, many problems we are confronted in public education, and all those disadvantages are exactly advantages in home education. Uh, for example, excursions are planned six months before at school, it cannot be else, but when it is a rainy day, yeah, it, it, it is of course to be destroyed, but home education, it's beautiful weather. You go. You are not bound to to very concrete six months before planned uh, organizations. Or, for example, a very interesting subject. Forty-five minutes we have. If, when the five forty-five minutes are done, we have to finish. I see. For example, uh, my daughters sometimes they have four or five hours dealing with uh, um, with some uh, subjects. Uh, they don't have to stop always uh, at a certain moment. They can dig in, they can go farther. 
Um, when there is, for example, uh, uh, when you're unlucky that a teacher mathematics, for example, is ill for three months, schools don't find always uh, an interim. These are problems we don't have in, in, in homeschooling. Um, or, for example, uh, a student is very, very interested in, uh, in history. He wants to talk about it. He wants to, 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 uh, to share his experiences. But he can, of course, not uh, give him uh, one hour the word. That's not possible because there are 23 other students. Um, for example, uh, for, for somebody, it goes much too fast. The person cannot follow. In, in home education, it never goes too fast, it never goes too slow, it's always adjusted. Um, for example, somebody who doesn't feel well uh, at school because he doesn't like TikTok, he doesn't like um, what others do, he prefers to observe birds, he prefers to do other things. Um, when that person is unlucky that he is put in a class in, in a class where this is not understood, luckily this is not always the case, but that person has a, a problem. This is a not existing problem at school. Uh, not to underestimate, there are pupils who are one hour and a half on their way to get to school. That's almost three hours a day. But you gain a lot of time by not having to do that. Um, there are all kinds of uh, disadvantages we are confronted with in the public education, which don't exist in the uh, home education uh, system. And that's something I, uh, I try uh, to illustrate. A very interesting, uh, the, that is the uh, what do with languages at school? Eh? There is that idea that you don't have that you, that you, that you, the best way of, of studying a language it, it is reading, speaking, listening, and not to study too much words. Yeah, I agree that's true. That's implicit learning. The problem at school is that you cannot do that in three hours. It's not possible. Implicit learning means that very regularly you, you deal with, with language data. So uh, many teachers of language are very frustrated at school because they, they want to watch films, they want to listen to music, and they, they think that students will, will learn by that. Okay? They will learn something that it is, it, it is uh, uh, it is not possible to to do uh, that implicit learning in in a few hours because it is not the the the, the perfect didactic context to so. Um, so this is um, show advantages you don't have uh, school. And my conclusion is home education. It's really quality education. That's the point I want to make. Uh, because um, it can learn efficiently, it can mean more motivation for the student because the student at home can make own choices uh, more according to the interests. There is more time for socialization and more time for individual development. Which are now the opportunities of this now question with uh, the public uh, schooling? Well, let me say, and I always say that students, pupils who like to go to school, don't change that. I, I was such a person when I was young. They just let them go, of course. Uh, a second thing, uh, pupils who really don't like to study and which uh, who completely demotivated and self-disciplined, well, it is not sure that home education will solve that. It's not sure. Uh, um, home education will not solve the problems of all demotivated students, but it can really solve that for some. And I, I, I make calculation to maybe five persons. That's not a big percentages, 
but uh, one person one person that's more than five thousand students already so if you make absolute uh, numbers of it then then you have really uh, every person is a few thousands of pupils in flanders anyway for those students who really really are not happy at school but who are eager to to learn who are eager to do something well for those students it can be really uh, um, a very very uh, positive thing and this is not only good for the student it's also good for the school because a school confronted with too many completely demotivated children that weighs on the whole class group that weighs on the teacher that can also demotivate teachers because they don't know what to do so it is really a win-win and that's what i also mean that's also what i try uh, I, I try also to convince uh, all those parliamentaries in uh, in the commission. This is a win-win. Uh, it, it is it it it, uh, it is very important um, to make both um, education uh, systems complementary to each other. Um, and that's a bit my my main point of. Uh, of view actually. So by uh, supporting home education, uh, it is also a small step uh, in uh, solving many problems in, uh, in, in, in public schools. And actually maybe also a small step in dealing with the problem of a lack of teachers. And also maybe a small step in dealing with the so-called um decrease of the school level eh? because uh, i think you also uh, uh, read about that uh, um, there are they don't know how to solve the problem of the so-called um decreasing uh, level of, uh, of 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 pupils um, as i said i am less confronted with this at my school because the level generally of in my school is not so low that I hear from colleagues teaching in Ghent, in Antwerp, in Mechelen, in Brussels, that there is a, more, a bigger problem with, indeed with, with, uh, uh, with uh, the, the level. Um, of course, uh, there are important conditions. First of all, there must be a positive attitude of the pupil for homeschooling. Second, there must also be parents, parents, coaches. If the home situation is, if there is no home at home, yeah, then, then there is also a problem. Unfortunately, Minister Weitz is right. He is sometimes right. He is right when he says that uh, it is terrible that for 35 persons, sociologists, sociologues uh, apparently, um, come to such a, such a data, uh, but for one third of the teenagers, school is uh, uh, a place of um, it's a safe, a safe uh, port, a safe ha haven for 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 many many students. Um, so uh, thanks to school, uh, one third of the pupils um let's say um can escape from terrible home situations uh, and this is a uh, and this is uh, of course a, a terrible fact so it's obvious that for, for for students or pupils who don't have a home yeah, homeschooling is of course uh, out of order we don't have to think about that and i think for many parents, not, not for all, but for many parents, real support, logical and financial support from government, uh, that would be also a, a very important thing. Eh? Um, I will say some, something about that uh, in, uh, in a minute, uh, but uh, at least uh, I hope that government will uh, realize that uh, home education is really not for everybody a bad choice. Um, 
what is my call to uh, the, the government? Uh, well, first of all, um, a very serious scientific research about the advantages and of course also the disadvantages of home uh, education. A serious research because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in Flanders. A serious research, an objective research. Um, and when there is carried out a, a very serious objective research, then in second instance, uh, I have a call to, to politicians to uh, have also uh, a, a correct, open um, transfer of this uh, that research to the to the public. Uh, um, it's important that people, that a society knows about the existence of home education. They have to know that. And they have also to know uh, which are the advantages, which are the disadvantages. And they, it, it is wrong that they are confronted with all those cliches. And a, a third, um, um, third um, call to the government, uh, I propose to build a, a kind of uh, didactic team, a real team of teachers, didacticians, um, that from distance can give support to parents who chose for home education. Uh, because the problem now, as I told you, the, the 1,500 um, homeschoolers nowadays, they find their way and they try also to organize sometimes some excursions. They come sometimes together and uh, we also organize Olympiades. Let's say we, we uh, organize that our children can take part in, uh, in competitions in Olympiades. The only problem is it is not time investment, and we are not paid for that. Big organization, we, do, we can do that. But that's a lot of time, and we are not paid. Why not uh, 10, maybe 15 teachers, a didactic team who is responsible, organize that to give support, online support, but also from time to time to organize uh, physical meetings in rooms at certain places. Uh, a, a didactic team uh, which also organizes for excursions, which organizes um, uh, also um, uh, workshops, uh, etc. Uh, that's actually my, my goal. And that will cost much, much less than the 160 million of euro that the government moment gives for giving computers away, et cetera, and uh, all kinds of uh, extra lessons uh, at, at school. Uh, I made a calculation that would be a cost even of about, it's a fast calculation, uh, uh, but in a fast calculation, that would be a cost of about 5 million uh, euro uh, a year. Uh, which is really not such a big sum when you compare that with the, the hundreds of hundreds of millions of euros which are uh, uh, which which go this moment to to uh, to the school system. Um, so um, this moment there are, as I said, one thousand five hundred about home educated children in Flanders. Um, I know that there are definitely more pupils who would um, who would shoot also in the, the system. But the problem is this: many parents don't know about the possibility of home education. Many parents don't know how to start, how to set up home home education, and many parents still follow the wrong cliches. And uh, that's why I do that call to the government. Uh, I have here what I said. Uh, I uh, summarize it here uh, in, uh, in English. Um, what can such a didactic team do? 
I explained it. I have here also summarized it on this slide in English. I also want to emphasize uh, that it's very important that this is not obligatory because not all parents uh, feel the need to have external support. It's very important that the system as it exists now uh, remains possible. But what I propose is an extra for those parents who really don't know how to start, how to do. Um, and uh, I think if I'm, I'm very sure that uh, when we will start with a very serious scientific research, I think we would be we will be surprised about the amount of parents. It, this will be more than 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 thousand. I'm very sure of it. Okay, I think I uh, shared with you the most important uh, observations, the most important conclusions. Um, and uh, I like to hear your questions, your remarks. I think I, I could catch a very, very interesting uh, remark, <laughs> but I'm listening to you. Yeah, yeah we, we had a little bit of a chat uh, when you were... Yes when you were out but there is a there is a theory and let's test it Hakan has a, a theory that actually if you stop sharing your slides we will get better coverage of your of your voice and face so can can we unshare already let's let's see maybe this will yes I a stop sharing yeah okay now I stop sharing is that how better you can hear me. I still see your screen. Ah, uh, uh, you do? Yeah, maybe I'll I'll, I switched it off. Maybe there is a delay anyway. Oh, yeah, no, no, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's it's such a pity with this connection because it's silly, but, but uh, okay, like we, are, we are managing. So, uh, we, we have. Uh, quite a lot of time still left. Who would like to ask questions, comments? Uh... Yes, I have quite a few questions, but maybe the most important one uh, before the others. Uh, first, I liked I liked your change of name that you kept on saying on schooling, but at a certain slide. Do, are you with us because you're? Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not certain uh, yes okay yeah, okay <laughs> so so at, at one of the slides you you suggested the change of name from homeschooling to individual i don't remember exactly how it was uh yeah yeah okay so actually i like the i like this name and uh, during your uh, your presentation thank you for mm -hmm. very informative informative uh, informative uh, presentation now he is disconnected oh <laughs> okay maybe we will wait for him to reappear there he is um, are you with us yeah now yes yeah okay there, there is indeed a, a sometimes a problem yeah a moment uh, <clears throat> This is what yeah. happens when you criticize government, you know, like you get. So, I, it is uh, <laughs> because uh, I have to pity it because normally we have, we have a very stable uh, internet. It is a pity. I, I don't know what is the reason, but okay. okay. Let's <laughs> not get paranoid here. Yeah? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, we are. Please continue. I, I don't like uh, what, what, uh, what. Uh, this renaming, uh, uh, let me think about it, is that I don't want right now to relate to this part of your presentation that compares uh, uh, individual autonomous uh, schooling to the public uh, public uh, normative uh, kind of uh, the, the framing of school. And I was thinking about education in, in maybe a, a wider terms, because it seemed to me yes. that a lot of what you were saying was more a kind of a focused on education as knowledge transfer, where I, I do believe that 
right now the internet presents the best opportunities for uh, for almost every topic uh, on the other end you were uh, just uh, uh, saying a few words before that about socialization and I was thinking about a certain point that education sometimes or maybe importantly and significantly includes a connection between two minds, meaning the mind of the student and the mind of the teacher. And it's not so much about a knowledge transfer as it is about human connection that uh, it's about how to think, how to feel, how to relate, how to communicate. It's an aspect of socialization, but not the one that you were speaking about. And uh, I was wondering, what are your thoughts about how to uh, provide or facilitate this aspect or this dimension of education, which goes uh, beyond the uh, knowledge transfer, and how to implement it in like individual autonomous uh, schooling. This is something that I'm interested to hear you thinking about. Um. Rinaldo is frozen again. And Zlatka, if you were saying something, you were muted, so we didn't. I just said he was frozen. Ah, yeah. I thought he was frozen, yeah. Okay, uh, can you hear me again? Yes. Yeah, I changed a bit the localization of a uh, bit nearer to internet. Uh, maybe it will work better. Yes, yes, now it's good. Yeah, it seems much maybe better. It was, wow. Maybe it was one meter too far from that, uh, no, that divider. Okay. Um, okay, let's, let's hope that it will uh, now be more stable. <laughs> Um, if it goes about the, the term, uh, I'm sure maybe it is interesting to think about the term, but my point is definitely home education, homeschooling is not a good term, according to me, uh, definitely nowadays, because people really think that those children are sitting consciously home. Uh, um, but of course, the, I, I'm sure you can find 10 other good, good terms, that, that's definitely sure. Uh, but if I if I speak about uh, individual autonomous uh, learning, uh, then I, I I I mean actually it is very open. It goes about individual development. It is of course learning, but it's not uh, only um, knowledge. It's more than, than learning. is very broad eh? and is autonomous in the sense that the student, the pupil, uh, uh, the teenager, really learns to learn, learns him or herself how to build up skills, how to build up, uh, how to dis discover uh, her own uh, capacities. And of course, we parents as teacher, we are coaches, uh, mainly coaches. And it is interesting also what you say about uh, mind contact. It's even not, it, this is really um, a multi-mind contact huh? because reading, reading a book is also uh, coming into mind touch with the author, going uh, to uh, uh, an online lecture recorded or live, it doesn't matter. This is also mind contact. Huh? Um, and uh, that's also what I mean. Eh? Thanks to internet, we can have so many mind contacts. But when you are not at school, you can choose more yourself which mind contacts. Because when you're at school, you have to follow what the teacher shows. Eh? The teacher decides what to show. Okay, I'm also a teacher. I do my best to, to show good things. But this, anyway, uh, if I uh, teach history, the sources I choose, it, it is a fact. Okay, uh, I'm open, I'm open 
for um, for contributions by students, but in generally they sit and they listen. Uh, so, uh, and uh, yeah. if I see my my with my daughters, oh, we have we have splendid talks. We discuss that that is yeah that is splendid. We we watch the same films. Uh, we read EOS, Nature. We go to websites. We we do experiments. We we go to museums. Actually, I think for homeschool, it's important that the, the parents also are eager to learn, to discover. Uh, I understand correctly you, what you what you describe now from experience. It's like an adventure within the family. Yeah. It's the, the, I was uh, I was asking I was uh, trying to focus on a certain point which is like the real time communication between uh, between uh, persons young persons teachers and thing and now the emphasis that you put here is like the the connection of this re real time uh, conversation mm -hmm. within the family yes uh, too. And I was wondering if you see a larger function for this, like in this in this sense, uh, uh, your daughter meeting other people, other than you, not with all respect. Yes, it's not. Uh, yeah. I'm just I'm just asking it a, as a kind of a more theoretical, philosophical question about yes. the function of this in education in general, because it seems to me that a, a young person, the more uh, other people uh, become available in communication, in real-time communication. I think it's valuable. Yes, it's not something that can be uh, easily quantified or even uh, tested. Yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, it feels to me something of the essence of of education. Is this uh, like maybe in the in older days in tribes? There were like okay, 100 people or a few tens or people mm -hmm. that everybody knew everybody and everybody was kind of able to learn or see patterns of behaviors and how people respond. Somebody is more aggressive. Somebody is more passive. Somebody is is a special mannerism and it's like a, a human intelligence in communication. This is what I'm I'm looking after and. I believe it's important in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in the context of education and how, yes, how it yes. can be implemented in, uh, uh, in, in this individual autonomous uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind of framing. Um, I think this, uh, this happens by all what uh, also uh, the pupils do, eh? because as I said, the parent, there has to be a, a central coach. I think that's not to avoid. Eh? At school, it's mm -hmm. the teacher. Yeah. There must be a central coach. Um, but it's important. We as parents, at least, we try that. And I know other homeschools who also do that. We let our children also, we give them also uh, freedom. Eh? Uh, so they, they uh, go also, they, they also go to uh, uh, the art academy, to the sports movement, mm -hmm. uh, to library. So it's not always we who are with them. Uh, uh, we, we let them also free. And we let them also free searching on internet. So it's, it's not that we always say, now we have to do that. And we do, sometimes we do that. But these are, this is rather in terms of, uh, look, this is something interesting I found. Uh, mm -hmm. Look at that. Or we will together look. But uh, the, our daughters are very skilled themselves already in, in finding their way on the internet. Eh? And, and the, the, this is not going on the net to find games. Eh? These, they are not gamers. They, they found out a waste of time. Uh, so they, they find also very often uh, interesting websites. Uh, and it, it happens very often that also they say, Papa, Mama, come, uh, we saw that, we found that. Um, and um, I think that this is uh, the, uh, the, the the base of, of home education, that we have the possibility to maximize the touch with many minds, if, if, if I can use the, 
a bit your also your um, uh, your terminology. Uh, different minds coming to uh, in contact, but of course, uh, as parents, we are of course the the central coaches. That that is definitely true, but that's not to avoid. I think otherwise there would be no structure. There must be a certain structure also. Uh, I can also uh, say something. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hi, everyone. So uh, I just have a, a basic questions, maybe. Uh, first of all, uh, I don't want to repeat all the questions again and uh, some, some common questions. Is there any website that we can refer or uh, forget to ask questions uh, or homeschooling in Belgium? Uh, this is my first question. And is there and uh, also is there any other uh, groups or some other uh, community uh, connection uh, interfaces uh, like we can like we can uh, uh, interact with uh, other uh, homeschoolers in Belgium. Uh, so this is uh, so because because my my questions are uh, mainly basic. Uh, I I already uh, decided why I do why I want to try for homeschooling. So uh, my questions are not about for, for homeschooling because uh, I noticed that already years ago that uh, from my, I I checked it from my uh, two children mm -hmm. uh, two children and uh, for example for the for the math uh, uh, which I showed them. Uh, Three four years ago, uh, still is still is valid what they what they learn today. So which is a proof for me that they they are just wasting their time in school. And also, uh, I uh, strongly uh, mm -hmm. check what they are uh, what my children are doing at at home uh, at their free time and how uh, is uh, how they spend their time for the things they like. So uh, I already noticed that. Uh, when when uh, they 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 discover a lot of things, uh, uh, than they discovered at school, and they more socialize uh, outside of school. Like uh, yeah. <laughs> even they, they 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 didn't have any time for for communication with uh, with other uh, other child uh, other children at school because they don't have enough time for that. So they already mm -hmm. noticed that. So they only have uh, ten minutes or twenty minutes. Uh, and another half an hour uh, during the all eight hours uh, when they spend their, uh, their time at school. So as I noticed that they they cannot uh, socialize with others, I spend my three or two, uh, two or three hours at the at the at the play garden and also at the at the uh, soccer place for my children after school. Just uh, let uh, them to socialize with their friends. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so for, for homeschooling, homeschooling, I think uh, uh, should be something that we that I I have I have to give a try. And uh, uh, but uh, I think there are a lot of uh, uh, for now. I think that there they they could be a lot of things to do from uh, how to apply for the homeschooling, where to apply, and these are very particular questions. And uh, maybe. The, there are some web page or maybe yes, there are yes, some, yes. some some places that, that I can refer uh, for basic questions. Yes, um, there is of course uh, the officially uh, the official website by the government. Um, I have to go uh, to internet. I, I can send it later. Uh, where there is, uh, let's say, quite dry uh, written what it is, what are your rights, what are your duties. And then there is also a link to the website of the, yeah, the Centrale Examen Commissie. And everything is written very well. Uh, what are the demands? Uh, what are the minimum goals? Everything is very clear written. Uh, then apart from that, uh, homeschoolers are, are also organized. Uh, and uh, there are different groups on Facebook. You can find some different groups. But uh, I think the best organized organization is a uh, VHOV, Vlaamse, um, the Vlaamse uh, Huisonderwijzersvereniging. Um, 
And I would advise uh, go to that website. There are contact addresses, and you can uh, definitely get uh, get in touch with the um, the homeschoolers uh, being responsible for uh, uh, the organization. Uh, VHOV uh, is, uh, and that's also, of course, uh, always the the problem. These are all people who take the initiative to organize things, but they are unpaid. This, this is actually voluntary work. Uh, they are homeschooling their own children. And apart from that, they try to, to do some initiatives. Uh, I also try from time to do, time to do something, uh, for example, organize uh, the possibility that homeschool children can take part in Olympiades, uh, in, in some uh, uh, science, science Olympiade, Mathematic Olympiade, um from time to time an excursion or a meeting uh, so uh yes that that these are at, at least the the two first things i can uh, can advise uh, uh, so the government website uh moment i'm uh, i can uh, go to internet um moment but if you just write huis onderwijs you will also find it huis onderwijs vlaanderen Yeah, I have here, uh, and then there are some links. That's here, moments. Um, and up here, here I can chat. Uh, yep. So that's the, let's say, the formal information by the government then there is also exam center it's on the way exam can you see exam center I will also send this. Yeah. I'm a bit slow here because I'm a bit more used to work with the uh, Microsoft Teams, I must say. Uh, yeah, okay. Then you come there. And then I will also send the organization on this. Uh, Meanwhile, is there anybody else who would like to comment on something or ask questions? Uh, Zlatka, yeah. Yeah, I, I had a question. I think I've discussed that with you as well uh, about mixing the roles of a parent and a teacher, which to me, um, yeah, is a, is a dangerous thing. Well, in my view, I would rather try to avoid mixing those. Mm -hmm. and it is inevitable if you are homeschooling your children that you mix those two. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it just speaks for for itself. So that is one problem that, in my mind, is a mm -hmm. drawback. Like, uh, and then there is. Uh, uh, the other uh, thing that uh, you mentioned, lots of people don't know about homeschooling and uh, to find about homeschooling is extremely easy in Belgium. And if the parents cannot even find that, I would not trust my children. One moment, one moment. <laughs> and that I, I want to nuance it a bit. Um, many parents don't know or are not aware of the existence. They don't think about it. And those who know it exists, they find information, but they don't know how to start with it. They don't know how to start with those. That, that's what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then isn't it also kind of a dangerous thing? You, you do school teachers for years in order to know how to start. And in your uh, examples, you were giving the example of an interim teacher that substitutes somebody who is gone for three months and you already found that to be a negative but then if the whole 
system is based on amateurs because I mean a parent generally is an amateur uh, as a teacher doesn't that have some stones under the water that uh, and and I think I mentioned something in the discussion that we had when you were gone uh, your kind of an assumption uh, is that the level of education or of understanding of the parents who homeschool is relatively high which is already a big how would i say demand that is not yeah. the the average case and i would even argue that for lots of people that might even think about homeschooling that is not necessarily the case and then a third uh, point, like if the parents work from nine to five, like full-time jobs, mm -hmm. I find that to be a pretty close to impossible thing I to do. That, of course, I understand. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. in that respect, I like what you suggested that the government might get involved to support um, logistically and financially mm -hmm. maybe a parent that homeschools mm -hmm. could be uh due for some grant or i don't know uh, I, I like very much the idea of support groups that might mm -hmm. educate parents but this would be some of my concerns i understand and there's of course a very a correct uh, a, a very relevant uh, concern um I also, um, I, 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 I never will hide that uh, many homes uh, are really not good for home education. Uh, let's be very clear. But every household, every family is else, as also every student. Um, it's very difficult to quantify because it, there is almost no scientific research. But this moment, I, I think even in 90%, maybe 95% of the cases, it's better that the children go to school. But we speak about more than 500,000 uh, school going children. Eh? So uh, maybe only in 5% of the cases, home education really can work. Eh? But 5%, that means 25,000 children on the whole population. And these are 25,000 children. And I am really convinced that I'm not far from that number, that this will not be so incorrect. That's not just speculation. That's observation and a bit of an extrapolation from what I see. But, but 25,000 children who feel really unhappy at school, but and having the possible home conditions for home education, well, I think for those children, it is really working. Uh, but indeed, uh, you will not solve all problems of school demotivation by saying, oh, you don't like to go to school or maybe home education. No, no, it doesn't work like that. Definitely not. That's why, according to me, it is also important that there is a, a control commission. Eh? There is a control commission we had already twice the control commission at our home. It was always very nice talk. We, that was always uh, very cozy. Um, but those, that commission is not testing the, the children. That commission is looking, is this a normal household? How are the children? How are those parents? Are, do the parents really know what they are doing? Um, so uh, it's important that there is a control commission, but that's of course not. Yeah, that that uh, that is of course uh, an instance, an official instance, which this moment exists, and it's important that it exists. But schools are also co controlled, eh? uh, and, and, and I think it's also normal, it's also good. There, there must be a, a control, otherwise if there would not be from time to time a control or a possible control, of course there would be abuses. 
And uh, I, uh, for me, it is very obvious if there is discovered abuse or practices which are really not allowable, then according to me, uh, it, it's, it's logic that the government uh, will put some actions. Uh, that's obvious. And then maybe a follow-up to, to those uh, concerns that I mentioned. Um, like, in a certain way, uh, do you plan to send your children to university after they finish? We definitely. We definitely. Don't yes. you think that uh, by then, maybe they might be lagging behind on the level of interacting with peers when they have to be in the same environment all day long. Same thing applies if they start working. They would be in an environment that they have not chosen. They, you can't choose your colleagues and just uh, socialize yes. with the one yeah, that's... But you choose your direction. So, yeah. No, I mean, uh, that to me is a valid uh, mm -hmm. uh, reason to send my child to school so that they would learn to interact even with people that they might not like that much even maybe with people that are not necessarily always 100% on their wavelength, that no. people, you understand what I mean? Because I understand, you, but I, you, you I, would I, be put in environments in your yes. life where you will have to have those yeah. skills. But I, that's something I'm very sure, very sure of. When children are 12, 13, they still have to learn to interact. When they are 18, you can suppose that they know already and our children will be able, I'm very sure of that. Uh, they work on projects in the art academy, they play together music. Uh, and I, if, I, uh, if I see how my daughter of 13 years old is already organized in studying, she's 13 years and she finished already her uh, exam uh, geography of the third degree uh, of, the, of 18 years because she's very self-disciplined. Uh, so, and, and that's something I'm really not worried about. Um, that has, of course, that is also our task as, as coaches. Eh? It's important that uh, you you also uh, uh, support your children in uh, in their relations, building up their relations, uh, and of course. Uh, for example, our youngest daughter had not long time ago a certain problem with, with some friends of the ballet group. We talk about that. We speak how you can deal with it. That is also important that you try to understand the others. We communicate about that. So if it goes about building up social skills, I, I am 100% sure that, that this will not be a problem for our children. And definitely not when they are 18. No, I'm, I'm not, not uh, worried about that. Yeah. It's, it seems to me uh, that in the discussion of, it's, it's usually this, yes, in, in the discussion of yeah. homeschooling, the, pro, the, the problem, the question, you know, the concern about social, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, socialization, basically. Very dominant, Not yes. learning, but socialization, this is what, what always on, uh, like pop, pop comes up. And it feels to me always that it's like, we, we really need to zoom in and understanding what sociality is. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 and yeah, kind yeah. of problematize this, because there, there are so many dimensions to being yeah. social, that like actually some aspects of being social are like very uh very well uh trained and developed in being in a group situation yes and some others are actually not you know and, yes. and it, it is the other way because for example if you are like what what Zatka is saying okay you deal with people you don't like to, like and so on and so on so this uh this um, you know like this aspect of being mm -hmm. social which is more you know like participating in the group dynamics, understanding what group does, what understanding how people behave in a group, yes? Understanding all those flows, you know, like all, and all those behaviors and how to contribute to such a group, you know, like basically of strangers, because it's not like, you know, like very like close, like, you know, like you, you are in a club, there's 30 people sitting, there is a meeting, you know, how do you, you know, like, how, what do you do? This is, this is one, one kind of like a side of sociality, yes? Uh, basically group processes. Another side of sociality is something that Weaver started uh, with his 
first question is meeting of minds, yes, relating, yes, learning to, mm -hmm. you know, learning to have a relationship, yes, yes, yes which yes, is yes, like yes. always like how many of them you have, it's one on one because it's like re relating, yes, learning to like, you know, like to be a good friend, you know, like learning to be a good student teacher and, and so on and so on. So this is something that actually in in smaller setups it's much like if you know they, there needs to be somebody who puts their mind on teaching you mm -hmm. that yes and actually you need to be uh, you you need to have a lot of unstructured time you need to have like you need to be free you need to be you know like you you need to have an attention span for that which in uh, in overly regulated social uh, situations like for example you are sitting like you know like in a cubicle in a corporation you know like the phones are calling or whatever like it's calling you know like you know a corporation and, and you don't do that yes yeah? so uh, so it's a it's a different dimension of sociality altogether yes it's more like this i thou relating mm -hmm. that that's like you know like as 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 humans need yeah? So I, I suppose that like it, we really need to qualify and differentiate which is which. And actually, like people that have spent their formative years in this kind of like small, intimate, you know, like mm, uh, learning situations, I kind of doubt they will ever opt for participation in sociality in this kind of you are there, but you don't have any influence on what is happening. You didn't choose the people who are in the room, but you are stuck with. Mm -hmm. They will just, you know, go somewhere else. You know, so we, which is also possible in in today's society. We are not, you know, like uh, yeah, the the, uh, the diversity of what what where you can go, what you can do is like it's huge. Yes, yeah? so so it's not necessarily that you need to be socialized for this kind of you know you have no influence where like where who you are working with for example you know like yes. so just just a comment on this on this word sociality that is yes but it is a yeah. it is a very complex it is very complex to uh, define uh, socialization and I, I want to give a, a short example because it is a, an experience i had which still touches me uh, i think it's about four years ago uh, uh, my youngest daughter she was five years old um, and uh, it, it's very banal. Uh, it is a daily example. Um, but I was doing shopping in Albert Heijn, and there is such a computer screen, eh? and uh, children can play a bit on that computer while parents are doing shopping. And uh, my daughter likes that. Eh? So was, she was sitting there, and there was a, a boy a bit strolling around her. And she said, if you want, you can you can sit next to me. We can we can to do that together. And that boy went away. And then when I went to the casa, I said, eh, Angela, come, eh, we will finish now. So she went to me, and then the boy said, saw it's free, and he was sitting there to use the computer alone. And then I wonder who is now most socialized. My daughter, five years old, homeschooled, or that boy going to school invited to do something together and running away. Who is now most socialized? That, that touched me so much, uh, but it, it shows anyway also how complex it is to understand socialize, socialization, uh, socializing, I mean, uh, and to define it in a very well. Uh, I, 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 I also can refer to that cartoon. Eh? Uh, all, the, all those students are now on, the, on that smartphone. Uh, is that socializing? It, it is, you can uh, have very long uh, philosophical discussions about it. For me, it's particularly interesting to listen to you because I know you are also a school teacher. So you mm -hmm. like you you are also like delivering yes. education in this different mode. Yes. Yeah? So yes, it's, like, yes. it's it's interesting to to hear uh, in that in that context. Uh, anybody else? Questions, comments? No. So, Rinaldo, would you would you like to add anything? Uh, I wanted to ask uh, uh -huh. maybe another question, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> I wanted to ask uh, uh, Rinaldo what he thinks about this uh, 
Buckminster College project that's offering a kind of an hybrid mm -hmm. hybrid uh, systematic education, which is mostly online, meaning that it's it complies to this idea of uh, education at home, but also with the um, augmented by a live interaction mm -hmm. over the internet, plus meeting in a meet space, yes, in a, the physical space, like every few days. So what do you think about it? Just, um, I'm, I'm a legitimate I'm question, late. yes, in the curl diver. No, it's not a difficult question. No, no, I, I can uh, easily answer on it. I'm uh, very happy that I, uh, uh, I got to know um, this project because I didn't know anything about it some months ago. So I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, and of course, it, it is a very good uh, initiative. It's good that people with the same uh, didactic interests can, can meet each other. Uh, of course, it's, it, it is very good. It's somehow also easy in a certain way. Um, but okay, I, I see I cannot go uh, too far, uh, um, but it is somehow easy. You don't have to, yeah, you, you don't have to make uh, big uh, transport movements to, to meet each other. So it is, it is of course, uh, very good. And uh, there are also very uh, interesting subjects that can be uh, uh, put uh, at the agenda. So uh, I, I, I will keep following you. <laughs> would, you would you have some special suggestions ideas suggestions yeah oh. <laughs> from your you also uh, it seems that you are very much uh, enthusiastic and passionate about it so maybe if you uh, have some, some ideas just that let, well, let's say uh, um suggestions very concrete i don't have immediately uh it is of course always okay. nice the, the only thing, it is of course nice, but yeah, how to do that, that's not always so obvious. It's of course nice that if you have a, a, a valuable uh, project, uh, meeting with each other, it's, it's, it's important that as many people as possible uh, know about the existence of it. That, that's very important, of course, because I can imagine that uh, also in, 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 for example, in this, uh, talk that there are other people uh, being interested and uh, they don't follow because they don't, don't know eh, that that is possible. Uh, but okay, I, I definitely will advertise it further. In my okay, and one, one last question, which is more specific. It's to, in your intuition, um, like a session where uh, an organic class meets online like we are meeting now on uh, zoom or another uh, kind of uh, online uh, mm -hmm. interface uh, with an instructor will mm -hmm. it work now I'm, I'm asking it very generally etc this configuration what is your gut feeling will can this work work i mean organically dynamically yes. This can work because other organizations also sometimes use these two. But uh, I would, uh, uh, it, it's mainly, it goes mainly about uh, being known. Uh, that's, that's important, being known. Uh, but of course, it, it, why wouldn't it work? Uh, um, the only, um, yeah, let's say uh, with uh, digital meetings, uh, it is a very interesting uh, instrument. Um, but um, um, sometimes people say, yeah, I, I, uh, I have no time now, but maybe I will see it once because if it is on YouTube, I, will, I can see it whenever I want. Um, that's also positive, of course. It is positive that people can also see it later. Uh, but of course, then uh, you cannot interact yourself anymore. That, that's of course true. Um, and definitely for people who like themselves to discuss, who like themselves to think, 
uh, and share own thoughts. Uh, I, I think uh, um, working with Zoom or Microsoft Teams or, or whatever, uh, that, that's of course a very, a very good tool. Eh? Because otherwise you have to organize that in, in, in Brussels or, or Antwerp. That's physically not always obvious to be there. And, and now it is easy. So uh, uh, definitely there are chances to, to, to grow, definitely. Yeah, we are venturing into, you know, like actually using technologies available, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and in, in a way that, that will that will make sense. And for me, you know, like I would I would never uh, want an educational program that would be only online for children. I mean, you know, like for adult education, there is like plenty, you know, like context yes. and, and topics and formats that like I, I actually prefer online and you know, but but if if you if you think about those those teenagers that that we that we are addressing, I think like what is like for me the the the, the key point is the combination with actual meetings, but mm -hmm in a different format not this kind of institutionalized you know mm -hmm. like this like like very industrialized in a, in a you know you know like kind of like formatting but but more you know like my, uh, it's it's more about the spirit of uh, of going somewhere together yes and and spending time together and with this yep. more camp like you know like uh, with, mm -hmm. which is like for me this combination it's about the combination because then if you have spent a few days with people together eating you know like doing yes, sports yes. you know like going uh, and and then you it's not just like a week event and then you don't meet again but then you meet again and then you meet again this is what for like this is what creates the social glue yes. and in a completely different level than uh than any any other you know like uh context and then when you come for more task oriented thing you do online you it, those are familiar faces you mm -hmm. know not only from the screen but those are your friends you've been yes, yes, in yes, the yes. woods together <laughs> you know so it's like it's a completely different glue that keeps such a group uh, uh and, and mm -hmm. let's, let's it work so so yeah that's so i'm kind of like you know like emphasizing the the combination which uh, and and i think for like what what we will be doing next year for uh, at, at Buckminster from the in the context of homeschooling this actually those residential sessions you know those kind of like group going together is I, I believe a much more important addition for homeschooling than what we can deliver online. Because what we can deliver online, you can, you know, like we can go to Khan Academy and do it, you know, in your own pace uh, or, you know, like brilliant.org or whatever, you know, so you don't have to have real time online, but you do need the real people, you know, <laughs> and consistently yes, yes. so, yes, that, that they don't disappear from your life, you know, like just, mm -hmm. uh, like yes, overnight yes. yes so they like you can actually invest in in building relations and, and so on my bell is uh is ringing so i suppose <laughs> it's uh it might be a good time for for us to to close if I yes. that. Okay. yeah <laughs> okay so, yeah so thank you so much rinaldo uh it was, it was a, a pleasure for me <laughs> also thank you <laughs> And good luck with your, you know, like uh, I, I see you are, uh, you're gathering political, uh, political well, let's say, here. So <laughs> let's say uh, the about 40, no, 35 members of the commission received uh, the link to the article. Okay. Um, also to this meeting, uh, but okay, uh, a few uh, already replied and they say that they will definitely read it. They are grateful that I sent that link. So, and I'm convinced that some of them uh, will think about it. Okay. Uh, so we, yeah, we have to start somewhere. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I, I think, like, if we are speaking sociality, actually taking care of the well being of those, what we estimated, 25,000. Yeah. Yes. This is what being social but, means. Yes. So but I, I, I also have it in me if I'm uh, convinced of my all, if I'm really convinced that uh, it's, it's true what I say that I'm quite stubborn in it. But I'm also patient because I understand very well that not everybody is immediately convinced and some people will never be convinced. I understand that. Uh, so that is also important that, that you can respect that not everybody agrees. That's, that's important. But uh, a certain stubbornness I have. <laughs> I think that's 
Fingers crossed. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. <laughs>